Hello and welcome to English Learning Hub. English Listening Test Designed for C1 Learners This test consists of 30 questions which are divided into 6 parts. I will give you a short instruction at the beginning of each part. Before we get started, take a pen and paper so you can take notes while listening. Are you ready? Let's get started. Part 1. Listen to the movie review and take notes. Tonight we're talking about the film recently voted the most popular movie of all time. It was made back in the 1950s, in 1958 to be precise. So, what's the film and why is it so popular today? Well, it's a classic thriller directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and it is of course, Vertigo. The film stars James Stewart as Scotty, an ex-detective, who has been forced to retire because of health problems, including Vertigo. In the movie, he's hired as a private detective to follow a woman, played by Kim Novak, who's been behaving strangely. The thriller, based on a novel written by a French crime writer, is set in San Francisco and is beautifully filmed partly on location, as the hero follows the woman through the streets of the city. The plot of Vertigo was described by Hitchcock as, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy meets girl again, boy loses girl again, but in fact it's a very complex film which needs to be watched several times to be fully understood. If you haven't seen it, I don't want to tell you too much about what happens, but let's just say there's some romance and there are a couple of murders. One of the most famous scenes takes place on top of a church tower. The film is shot using a special camera effect, now known as the vertigo effect, which creates a confusion between fantasy and reality, and which reflects Scotty's mental state. The powerful soundtrack, written by Bernard Herrmann, also adds to the strange atmosphere. Although it received some negative reviews when it was first released, the film has since become more popular among critics than perhaps any other of Hitchcock's films. Like many thousands of people who chose this as their favorite film, I believe that Hitchcock has never been beaten as the greatest creator of suspense and mystery. Choose the correct option. Part 2. Listen to 5 conversations about a movie quiz. Match the conversations, 1 to 5, with what the speakers are talking about, A to E. Have you seen this quiz about movies? In the first part, you have to recognize the actors by the part of the body. Let me see, oh. That one's easy. I think that must be Daniel Craig's neck and shoulders. What about this close-up of someone's mouth? Well, it's obviously a woman, and someone with perfect teeth. Ah, I recognize that smile. It must be Julia Roberts. Do you know anything about this movie? No, but from the picture it might be a horror film because that man has scary eyes. 
Or it may be an action movie because several people are running around with guns. It definitely looks violent. Yes, but it can't be a serious horror film. It just looks too silly to me. I think it's probably a comedy. Can you remember who made the Star Wars movies? Wasn't it Steven Spielberg? No, the only science fiction movie he's ever made was E.T. But didn't he make Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Oh, yeah. You're right. I know. It was George Lucas. What nationality is this actor? Well, the previous actor who played Zorro was Antonio Banderas. It might be another Spanish actor. No, I think it's Gael Garcia Bernal, the Mexican actor. Oh, yes, he's excellent. Do you know where the English patient was filmed? I know the story set in Italy and Egypt, and I think they shot it in both places, although I heard they filmed some of the Egyptian scenes in Italy. For example, I think they used a hotel in Venice to represent the hotel in Cairo. That's probably true, apparently, the old Cairo hotel was destroyed in the 1950s. Choose the correct option. Part 3. Listen to 5 young people talking about following fashion. Choose from the list A to F, which problem each person mentions. Use the letters only once, there is one extra letter which you don't need to use. Yeah, of course I like to look fashionable, doesn't everyone? And it doesn't have to cost a lot if you're smart about it, but one thing that really annoys me is that the stores in the mall usually have the same clothes at the same time. That means customers don't exactly have a lot to pick from. Well, not every color works for me because of my skin color, so I wish that the designers would think about that when they're planning their collections. What suits one person doesn't necessarily suit everyone. I like to wear well-made clothes too, so I don't mind spending a bit more on them. I spend most of my money on clothes, and I don't feel guilty about it at all. I wish that the designers would consider people like me a bit more though. I'm really tall, and it's hard to find clothes that fit me properly. I suppose I'm lucky in that I can wear most colors well. I think most people my age want to look good and wear fashionable clothes, and it's not hard because the stores are always full of the latest trends. I mostly shop online and can even have something delivered the next day. I do a lot of shopping so that means that my bank accounts are not exactly in great shape. But, hopefully I'll find a cheaper way of staying fashionable. I love clothes and I always try to make sure that I've got the latest fashions. I buy most of my stuff in the local stores in town, just because that's easier for me. I don't spend a fortune on clothes, but it makes me mad when I get something and discover that it's poor quality. Choose the correct option.
Part 4. Listen to a young woman talking about setting up a fashion company and take notes. So, you've decided to set up your own fashion company. My sister Emma started her own company a few years ago, so I can tell you what I've learned through watching her and hearing about her problems. Well, I won't tell you that this is an easy job, because it's not. There are several things you have to consider carefully if you want to be successful from the very beginning. You need to think about what kind of clothes you want to sell. Men's or women's? Both? Children's? What you decide at this stage will make a big difference further down the line, so it's important to make the right decision. Most people say that it's best to stick to selling just one thing and really thinking about it long and hard. In the end, my sister went for kids' clothes. Obviously, you'll need money to set the whole thing up and to get going. Many people use their own savings to begin with, but they usually find that they need much more than that. And that's where family comes in useful, you know, for lending money for some time without charging interest on it. Neither of these were an option for Emma, but she was very lucky to have a close family friend who offered to lend her the money to get started. The business started off very small, and it took her some time to build up her customers. So she didn't need a lot of space to begin with. I mean, there was no need to rent an office or anything like that. In the early days, though, she just used her own bedroom. Actually, she still works from the garage at our house because it's not used for anything else. She's doing really well now, and we're all so proud of her. It certainly wasn't easy for her, but we all helped out with anything we could. We packed boxes and prepared labels or went to the post office for her. All of that helped, of course, but I've no doubt that the main reason for her success is the amount of hard work she put in. She worked all day every day and hardly took a break. She also had quite a few contacts from the days when she worked for a large fashion store, and they were definitely very useful. I was also thinking about starting up some kind of business myself, though I'm not sure exactly what kind of thing I want to do yet. Emma's given me lots of advice. She said I should do a lot of research to begin with, you know, about the product I want to sell and other companies selling the same thing. She also said that the most important thing was to get a bit of business experience. I'm taking a course at my local college at the moment, and through that I hope I'll be able to go and spend time with some companies for a few weeks. And, of course, that'll give me a qualification. After that, we'll see. Who knows? I might have my own company someday soon, too. Choose the correct option. Part 5. Listen to 5 travel announcements. Choose from the list, A to F, what each speaker says about the train or train station. Use the letters only once, there is one extra letter which you don't need to use. This is an announcement for all passengers traveling to New York Penn Station. The 1002 will now depart from Platform 9B, 
not 8B as previously announced. Passengers should make their way to this platform, where the train has now arrived, using the stairs at the end of platform 8B. Thank you. Welcome to Chicago Union Station. This is a reminder that many platforms are no longer in use due to modernization work being carried out in the station. Please check travel boards carefully for information about all departures. Due to severe weather in the north of the country, Amtrak is sorry to announce that the 650 service from Detroit to Minneapolis slash St. Paul has been cancelled. Could all passengers please listen for further announcements about later services? Thank you. Welcome to Grand Central Terminal. Due to today's weather, surfaces may be icy, so passengers are advised to be careful on all platforms and while using the stairs in the station. Please allow extra time to reach your platform. Thank you. We are sorry to announce the 715 to Boston South Station has been delayed by approximately 23 minutes. Could all passengers please check travel boards on the platforms or in the waiting room for updates, as there will be no further announcements about the service? Thank you. Choose the correct option. Part 6. Listen to a woman talking about an adventure vacation she has been on. Welcome back everyone. Now, vacations are big business these days, and one type of vacation that's becoming more popular with the 18 to 30 age group is the adventure vacation. With me in the studio is Aria Dawson, who's just returned from this kind of vacation, and she's going to tell us what's involved. Thanks for joining us, Aria. Thanks for having me. So, tell me first of all why you were interested in going on an adventure vacation. Well, I was bored of going on the usual sunshine vacation, you know, lying on a beach sunbathing for a week, and so I wanted to try something different. I also wanted to learn some new activities. I'm quite sporty anyway, so I thought, why not try something different? And I knew I'd meet lots of people who are interested in the same kind of things as I am. There's nothing wrong with the friends I already have, of course, I just wanted to meet some like-minded people too. Sure. Where did you go on your adventure vacation? Oh, I spent a long time researching that and changed my mind so many times. Australia is one of the most popular places for adventure vacations, mainly because there's so much you can do there, and I was very excited to go, but the price put me off in the end. Europe's great too, but it's not cheap either. So, I went for Alaska in the end, it's not too far away, and we saw some beautiful scenery while we were there. The weather wasn't great, but we sort of expected that. Yes, I imagine. So what was your favorite activity while you were there? My favorite? Hmm. To be honest, I liked everything we did and we did so many things. I learned how to kayak, the fjords are just right for that. We had a few sailing lessons too, and they were fun, hard work, but enjoyable. One thing which was really great, though, was horseback riding along the coastal paths, just miles and miles of peace and quiet and gorgeous ocean views. That was very relaxing. 
Did you spend all of your time at the coast? No, the vacation started off inland. We camped in the mountains and learned how to manage without all the modern conveniences that we're used to at home. Then we traveled to a completely different area and explored some national parks. It was only the last four or five days that we spent near the coast. Was everyone able to manage all the activities they were asked to do? Yes, they were actually, and that's because we were divided into groups according to our abilities. The guides wanted us to push ourselves and try hard, but they were realistic about what we could and couldn't do. We had a big age range on the vacation too, but we all had to try everything. Well, it sounds like you had a great time and thanks for sharing your experience with us here today. Thanks. Choose the correct answer. Don't forget to share your score in the comments section. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe because more useful content is on the way. Leave a like and turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of our new videos. See you in the next videos.